Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I am super excited to be sharing with you my birth story. Corbin is also here because he was very involved in the birth story or the birth itself. Um, so I'm really excited that he gets to share his side of the story. Um, but before we get into all of that, if you remember, let's rewind back before we actually got pregnant, we were dealing with some um, fertility concerns mm -hmm. um, and I really wish at that time I had known about this test so today's video is sponsored by let's get checked let's get checked has a wide range of at-home tests they're actually accredited lab tests that are delivered directly to your door and then provide online results within two to five days so that means no more going to the physician you don't have to take time off work it's very, very private and very convenient. Let's Get Checked arrives at your door and Tabor is right here sleeping in my lap. <laughs> uh, so Let's Get Checked arrives in very discreet packaging to your door. It doesn't show up like this. It's yeah, actually a different a, sort of packaging. It was just like a white film that was all around it. Mm -hmm. And it's next day delivery. So basically how it works is you just do it at home. It's super simple. You collect your sample in the morning and you send it back that same day with a prepaid shipping label. And then your results are gonna be available for you online in about two to five days. Something I really like about Let's Get Checked is they they have 24 7 medical support teams so when you get your results if you have any concerns they're available physicians and nurses are available for you to chat with and discuss what those results mean and potential treatment options if necessary the test that I personally have that I'm gonna be testing is a thyroid test just to see like where my thyroid is at how it's functioning but the test I wish I had known about when we were dealing with our fertility concerns are all of their female fertility tests and they have three different tests so they have a progesterone test to see where your progesterone level is they have a ovarian reserve test to see actually see like how many eggs you have left in your ovaries. The ovarian reserve test might be an uh, important test for someone who's interested or looking into starting IVF. It might give you a uh, kind of like an idea of how well you might respond to those treatments. And then there's the female hormone test, which is kind of just like an overall, lets you see where you're at with your hormones and might be just really good if you're considering starting a family soon, just to see like where you are balancing your hormones. So I definitely learned a a lot about how important hormones are when it comes to definitely wanting to start a family and there I just feel like it's not something that's tested until you are dealing with problems and so to have a test that you can do just in at your own house at your own time just to see where you're at before even like having to get to or deal with problems I think is super super convenient and also really reassuring um, it just feels like you have a little bit more control. If you guys are interested in uh, Let's Get Checked, they definitely check it out. They have so many different tests available. We have a 20% off coupon for you. So just click that link down in the description and use our coupon. But now to get back to the birth story. So we were super, super blessed and super lucky that our fertility concerns ended up not being a big deal for us. I know that is not always the case and we have so much like support and love for you guys who are struggling out there. Um, but we do wanna share our birth story with you. We're, I don't know. Corbin is here because he remembers it more than I do, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I remember the I last asked him, I was too. like, I don't remember. You have to tell me what happened. So I will jog her memory. <laughs> um, but basically I was, induced so i was at 41 weeks and we had a scheduled induction at 7 a.m 7 a.m exactly 41 weeks and what we use for the induction is the gel don't want to get into details about that because it's kind of gross but it was just a gel so a depository um right on my cervix and i had to lie still when did I get that? I got that you at got 8. You got that at 8.15. 8.15. So I checked in at 7, and then I, I didn't get the gel until 8.15. And then I had to lie still for an hour? No. 30, 30 minutes 30 on minutes. my back, and then I could switch to my side for the yeah. another 30 minutes. Yeah. And it got pretty intense. <laughs> the gel worked really, really fast. 
And she said it probably would work really fast that she's only had to do multiple depositories like one time. She's only had to do it twice like one time. Usually it works really fast. Yeah. And it totally did. Immediately I started like feeling the cramps after like, I think it was like 10 minutes. I started to feel definitely more cramping. And I had actually had contractions the night before. Yeah. Right? A couple. Was it the night before? Because it was either the night before or two nights before. It was the night before because you I were I remember like, messaging her yeah. and or texting her and saying, hey, I've had some contractions. Should we still do the induction? Mm -hmm. And she said, the induction is a gentle induction. It's not like Pitocin. Yeah. And I, it's up to you, but it's not going to, there's no like harm in doing it. I was like, okay, let's just do it. Because I was afraid I was going to have contractions for like days and days and days yeah. and still no baby. So we went ahead and went forward with it. And yeah, it really worked. What happened next? <laughs> um, so then you started having very long contractions. I had long contractions the night before even. Oh. I remember texting her saying, they're not consistent but they're very long yeah so the longest one you had was five minutes like a full <laughs> contraction for five minutes i remember thinking like okay is this actually labor or is this still like the induction because they did say like it could get like really intense and then it might slow back down so the whole time i was thinking like okay this is probably still just the gel mm -hmm. it hasn't really started but it never slowed down. It never slowed down. And yes, the contractions were very, very, very long. Like, five minutes is ridiculous. Yeah. Right? Well, Isn't that, I think. And it happened so fast because your last labor was 53 hours. And so this time you like, I feel like you contracted for two hours and then <laughs> it was done. Yeah, this birth or this labor was so different from my first in so many different ways. Just it the first labor was 50 plus hours. This one ended up only being 6 hours. Mm -hmm. So I it happened very quickly. I was having these really long, really intense contractions and I was just like oh my gosh, like this has just started, but I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> anymore. I remember I was just like immediately already thinking like, okay, I'm ready for the epidural. <laughs> I'm done. Um, so I started having that conversation and Corbin was actually like, Sure. <laughs> I was like, wait, because we it literally felt like we just got there. We did. It had only been a couple hours. Like she had just been contracting. It only been two hours, and then she's like, I need the epidural, and I was like, wait, are you like, are you sure? Like I didn't know. I legit didn't know if you were joking. Like I legit <laughs> didn't know if she was like, give me it right now. You know how some women are like, I'm going in the doors and getting the epidural, <laughs> and I was like, wait are you sure? And then you're like, yeah, I need it. And then I did before that I did a bunch of like, I had like the birthing ball. I tried yeah. to like get into different positions. Um, but it was just, I never got to that intensity level with my first birth. And it was very scary for me because it was happening so fast. And one of my biggest fears about going into birth or going into the second birth was that I would, it would happen too fast and I wouldn't get the option of an epidural. So mm -hmm. that has always been at the back of my mind. It's like, I want the option. I want the option. And it was just happening so fast yeah. that I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I have to choose. <laughs> yeah. For the first labor, you got to around a five dilation. Mm -hmm. And for this one, you got to around an eight. Right. Before the epidural. Before the epidural. So. I remember the nurse, because you know you spend the most time with the nurses. Yeah. The midwives are sometimes there and sometimes they're not yeah. there. And our midwife was amazing. She absolutely amazing. But you spend the most time with the nurses. And uh, she kept saying... I would just do the epidural. <laughs> no. <laughs> I would just get it. She didn't say. She said that like one time. But she... <laughs> kept reminding me it's like okay it takes about an hour once you request an epidural so you have to think to yourself can i do this for another hour and then so i was in this phase and i was like okay it feels so soon to ask for one i'm not really sure and then i was like okay i'm gonna do the gas oh yeah and she like got it all like set up and then 
I forget what happened. I had like a really, really strong yeah. contraction. And I was like, nope, epidural. <laughs> but you did the new bane first. I did the new bane first, but the nurse was like, I don't think the gas is going to work for you at this point. Yeah. Like, I think we've passed that point. Yeah. And so she like set it all up and then had to take it away. <laughs> and she gave me the wine, which is new bane. So what I ended up doing was getting the new bane while waiting for the epidural like mm -hmm. that's how intense it was for me at that point and i did not really like the new bing it just made you drunk like I you didn't, just seemed drunk i just it was i don't know what i was expecting i i'm not really sure what i was expecting it definitely definitely took the edge off but i could not really think and i don't understand personally how you can have a baby when you can't think like you have to be able to think yeah. clearly and the thing about an epidural is it doesn't mess with your head like you are you don't really feel the pain but you're there like you're can you're present you know what you're doing and or at least that's how it is for me but this it just was so so different and I didn't like it I remember them giving it to me and then it was right when my midwife came in and she's asking me questions and I was like what? <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't I was just like, her. what are you even talking about? <laughs> and the nurse was like, we just gave her the new bane. <laughs> yeah. But it was very weird. I was just like waiting for it to go away. I was glad that I had it while I was waiting for the epidural, but I was waiting for it to go away after that because I wanted to be able to think clearly. I didn't like that I couldn't think clearly. Mm -hmm. I really didn't like that. Um, and yeah, so I got the epidural, and again, I was like, oh my gosh, it's the best thing in the world. <laughs> Why didn't I? I don't know. There was, There is always going to be a part of me that's like, I'm never going to know what it's like to have natural birth. Mm -hmm. like, that's always going to exist for me. But it was such a beautiful birth because I had the epidural and it was so calm so relaxing there's like music playing it's just it's very very different from like birth you see on the screens mm -hmm. for movies it was not crazy and screaming and all of that fun stuff and yeah. the best part is so like I got the epidural and then what what happened and then um you took a little bit of a rest, I'd say like 30 minutes. I wanted to take a nap, but that yeah. didn't happen. You took like 30 minutes to an hour just to rest, you didn't sleep, and then you started pushing. Mm -hmm. um, what time you, was it at this point? Like 2, 2.10. Two okay. And then you started... So I got the epidural about what time? Like noon? Like no. Noon. Yeah, I think so. Like noon? Around there. Okay. I think I ordered some food. Yeah. Ate. Did I? Mm hmm You ordered breakfast. Oh, that was in the beginning. Yeah. I don't know. But basically, so you got you had the epidural, you rested, and then you started pushing, and you only pushed for maximum would be 25 minutes. Which is crazy. It yeah. was like two hours last time. Because right? I remember the midwife was like, okay, let's try to get this baby out in two pushes. And then, so you did... I, you did one push, mm -hmm. and then I turned on the camera, and you did another push. I think you did three, because I almost missed it. I remember thinking, because the midwife scared me. She's like, oh, we're going to get this baby out in two pushes. And I could see the head, too. You could? Yeah. So I like was before like... before I started pushing? Yeah. Because it was so I do low. remember, yeah, because he was, he was really very, low. very low. But my, it's weird, my cervix was, like, in a weird place. She actually had to, like, pull my cervix, which is, like, oh, I don't like to think about that. How does that work? Um, yeah, but I remember you did one push without me with the camera. Because last labor, you pushed, like, for two to three hours. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I have time. I'm just not going to turn on the camera. Mm -hmm. And then you did one, and I, like, legit saw, like, a lot of his head. And I was like, okay. So then I ran and turned on the camera. Uh-huh. And you did two more pushes. So you pushed three, about three times. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, Happened so fast. Yeah, and it was and, really cool because yeah. I got to deliver him, yeah. which was amazing. Such an amazing experience. I don't get woozy over, like, medical stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I that was one thing I asked the midwife. I was like, can I deliver him? 
or no, I asked the nurse, I was like, will I be able to deliver him? And she's like, well, you know, you can probably like, you can be there and the midwife will probably just like guide your hands. Um, so it made it seem like I wasn't really going to, but like that I would be helped along the way. But then the midwife got there and she was awesome. She was just like, yeah, go for it. And she like, she was standing there like if I needed any help, but it was basically just me delivering him and like, it was crazy. She didn't tell me what to do or anything. She, I think she wanted it to be like that. I think she just wanted it to be like natural, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just did what came natural and then yeah. delivered him. That was, uh, that was very cool. I think that's super cool. You got to deliver him. So you caught him and then you put him on my chest. Yeah, and... I caught him. That's the only part where I didn't know what to do. I like <laughs> caught him and I was like holding him and I'm like, what do I do with him? <laughs> and then she's like, okay, you can lay him down on her chest. And then I just like lay yeah. him down on you. But And then yeah. he, yeah, and he, then he was there. He barely cried. Yeah, he let out like. Which is, you know, a little scary at first because you want them to cry. But he yeah. was just like very the, like. The crying on the birth vlog, that is the only crying that he did, and it's really short, and that's as long as he cried for. Yeah. It was like two to three little wah. Yeah, but on the birth it. vlog, that was all of his crying for the entire yeah. birth. He did not cry. He still doesn't really cry. Yeah. And he was born, so he was born about... 2.30. 2.30? Mm -hmm. Just about 2.30. 8 pounds, 3 ounces, 21 and a half inches long. Yep. Yeah. And he's so sweet. He, is, he sweet. is so sweet. So after that happened, then how you deliver the placenta. They didn't give me any Pitocin, even after the epidural. The epidural didn't slow anything down. Yeah. It was just like kept going at the mm -hmm. same speed it had been going. Um, so I didn't have any Pitocin at that point. Um, I delivered the placenta. That was all fine and good. But then they do the uterus massages where they push down and they did one and it was fine. Mm -hmm. And then they did it a second a time, second time and there was like, I felt it. It was like the and most. And I heard it and I was like, what was that? It was like the most blood I've ever seen in my life. It like was really... blood just everywhere. Like I, I, I immediately was like, uh oh, like <laughs> what was that? That's not all right. of us. All of us, like it was me, the nurse, and the midwife. And we all just kind of look at each other, and then the midwife's like, okay, we're gonna start you on this, and it's a medication. Basically, what happened is the uterus has to contract down to close up the wound, and mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this. I didn't know this, um, but if if they push on it and it contracts down and then it can sometimes open back up and then it fills with blood and then when they go to push on it again it like squeezes all that blood out which is what happened it was like huge like blood clots and tons of blood um i did not see it thank goodness that <laughs> stuff does make me very wheezy yeah so then they had to give you a medication which keeps your uterus contracted which well then they put me on pitocin which yeah which contracts but they your also uterus. gave me a shot I don't know what the shot was. Yeah, Something to I. help prevent hemorrhaging. Yeah. I'm so assuming. then your uterus is clamped down and the, the wound where the placenta was connected to your uterus was closed, gotcha. which is where the blood comes from. So, so that was probably the scariest thing. Oh, this is going to be all out of order. What? <laughs> um, when I was pushing, his heart rate slowed down. Oh, yeah, but that was normal. That was normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it it slowed down, but then she like she showed me what to do. You like his umbilical cord might have like gotten around his neck, so she just like she actually pushed, pushed him, back, him in. back in, and, and then, then his heart rate. Went yeah, back but up. she said that happens a lot. Oh, okay. So well, it was still. I don't know. She was so great because if somebody would have said that, I would have been freaking out. But the way she stayed so calm. It was just like absolutely not a problem. Like yeah, this is and like fine. knew what to do. She and... was just so confident and so calm. I felt so calm throughout yeah. everything like that, which normally I would have been like, "Oh my gosh, like <laughs> get the baby out! What's happening?" Yeah. Um, yeah. So, anyways, so the bleeding happened after the placenta, and then that was it. They did a lot more massages because they were afraid it was going to happen again. Mm -hmm. They really, really pushed hard is good and thank goodness i had had an epidural because it was like i'm sure that would have hurt really yeah, bad that would have hurt. um and yeah and he was delivered so 
Usually, I think it's about two hours after delivery, they take you up to the room you're gonna stay in for recovery and however long you stay at the hospital. Um, for me, like there's a couple things that have to happen before you're moved back or moved upstairs to another room. And one of those is you have to be able to like walk to the bathroom and pee on your own. Mm -hmm. I could not, I could not. So I'm really sensitive to like anesthesia. Um, my mom is also really sensitive, so I think that was a big part of it. But I was super, super dizzy. Plus, I had lost quite a bit of blood. Yeah, you also <laughs> lost tons of blood. So so I couldn't make it to the bathroom. And, like, we kept trying to do, like, trips to the bathroom, and I would get really lightheaded, and so I'd have to go back. And I couldn't make it to the bathroom. And then I finally did make it to the bathroom, but I couldn't pee. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that was a thing. Um I don't know how many hours we stayed. It was a while. Yeah. yeah. It was and longer, they eventually but... took me up on a stretcher. <laughs> because, right? Wasn't yeah. it a stretcher? Yeah. I don't well, know why that part is like so hazy for me. Was, was like I a, on a stretcher? It was a rolling bed. But a rolling yeah. Bed. So they just transferred you to the rolling bed and then moved you up. Yeah. So, <laughs> which is not very common. They don't usually like to do that kind of stuff. But yeah. that's what they did. And, um, yeah, I made it upstairs and eventually I was able to do all those things by myself Yeah, and it worked out, but it took a while for me to like, I had to call for every time I had to go to the bathroom that first night, which was pretty annoying, but for understandable reasons. Yeah. And, yeah. And after that, I healed really fast. I feel like that was just like the one thing I had to get over was like going to the bathroom by myself and not being lightheaded and dizzy. But then the next day I was like up wearing jeans. A lot of you guys commented on that <laughs> on our video. <laughs> They're actually maternity pants. But yes, I was wearing maternity jeans and even put on a little makeup and I felt great and was ready to get out of there. Yeah. So we left. We, we only left stayed in the, the hospital day. one night. And we left like mid afternoon the next day after we were cleared and he was cleared and we were all good. So it was a very, very easy birth. Um, contractions were super intense. Don't know. I still like to all of you out there who have natural births, like that's crazy. You guys are crazy, but I'm super proud of you. That is intense. Yeah. It was super intense. And yeah, it ended up being very peaceful with an epidural. So, <laughs> so that is our birth story. It was definitely our story. We were both involved, even though I did most of the talking. And well, you did most of the work during the birth too. But. <laughs> and I'm just super, super grateful that we're all okay and healthy and everything worked out and we have our sweet baby boy who's been sleeping this whole time right here right here he's literally right here you can't see him but he's right here so a thumbs up for your, our birth story again definitely go check out let's get checked if you're interested I, we have our link down in the description below and we'll see you in our next video favorite Peter.